everybody and welcome. Uh, this is how I paint the Sons of Horus green armor. Uh, I'm, my name is Duncan. Uh, I'm from the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. Um, thank you for tuning in, as always. Uh, these guys have already been base coated. They've already been xenothal and there are 10 of them. They will be inducti for the Sons of Horus, as you can tell from the chain axis. You can see they're already, as I said, based in Zenithal. Um, this one here, the sergeant. Now, my base coat is slightly different. I do a little bit of white on top of the black for the part that's not fully Zenithal because it does give the green shade a little bit better of a pop, so you can actually see the green picked out a little bit better. Um, in this case, I am going to be using four paints total. Uh, the first is uh, Sons of Horus Green. Uh, this will be the lighter of the greens. Um, I will be using three greens in this. I'll be using Sons of Horus Green, I'll be using Lupercal Green, and I'll be using Coelia or Coelia Green Shade. So uh, I'll see you back in a moment. Oh, uh, one thing I would like to make note, I'm doing this through an airbrush. Um, and the way I do stuff on the airbrush with these paints, uh, I do a roughly one to one mix with um, actually I think it's closer to two bits of uh, airbrush thinner to one bit of paint. Um, it does come out a little thin but I also do multiple coats of each green. The first coat is pretty much just a filter. Uh, the second coat, third coat, fourth coat, etc. From there, it starts becoming more of a, uh, an actual shade you can pick out. Um, yes, you can pick it out at the very beginning a little bit, but not very well. Anyway, so uh, here's me filling the airbrush with the first round of uh, airbrush thinner, and we'll be back in a moment. Here we go with the start of the first shade of green. Uh, again, this is the Sons of Horus green from Forge World Airbrush Paints. Uh, it's a discontinued paint, it's been out for a while. As you can see, it is fairly transparent at the level I am throwing it on here at first. Um, it's There's not a lot of it. It's not very dark, it's very, very light. And the first layer, like I said, is mostly a filter. Um, I'm being not all that careful because you don't really need to be at this stage. But I am only getting this, we're doing close to getting this only on the sections of the miniature that are currently Xenophil white. And that's because with this being a very light paint, you don't need to put this over the darker area because that will just start bringing it up already. And for the next paint after this, we don't want to do that yet. But this is the sergeant. The other guy, which is a, t a regular conduct eye, as you can see, covering all the areas of the mini that are xenophil white. The backpack, the arms, and this is doing this entirely so that you can sit there and have, well, this is where the sun's coming from, or this is where ambient light is coming from, because this being the lighter shade, it's going to show up better, and it's going to present better as the whole process unfolds as a whole. You'll see. So, there's two of them. I'm not going to show you how to do all ten, but this is the very first layer of the first three. Fairly simple, fairly quick. Um, you'll notice I'm going from the bottom up. Um, you can go from the top down. You can go from one side to the other. I personally go from the bottom up because that way anything is going to trickle down in the first few layers because it's easier. But the back, the uh, the backpacks matter, the legs and body matter, the shoulder pads they don't matter because we're going to re be redoing those later anyway. Now that will not be part of this video. This is, like I said, just the greens and how we do that. So this guy's just about done here for the first layer, the first layer, and uh, we'll put him aside here in a moment, and we'll be coming back with the next step, the second layer second layer. 
everything ready to start the second layer of the green. So again, going from the bottom up, you'll see that the green is starting to pick out more now. Um, it's coming to look a lot less like a filter and more like an actual shade, which is what we want. Again, we want this to be a light shade at this point. So multiple shade, multiple layers of this single solid green. Um, it, details come out very, very well through it at this point. And you'll see we're not applying quite as much because we don't need to because we're not filtering the entire thing. We're just now shading what we need to shade. But this is the second layer of this green. Again, legs, body, head, backpacks, arms. And just one half, in essence, of the miniature is getting this. So, this is the second guy. You see how it's splitting kind of down the middle of the uh, chest plate, and it's kind of splitting down the middle of the head. Ditto with the arms, with one side not being touched, and the legs. So, in essence, we only have to paint half the model at this point. But, this is where we are. So that's three guys done. And uh, we'll be back here in a minute with the third layer of this green. You're going to get the idea. There's four of these. One thing I want to show you before we get to doing the fourth layer. On the right you have with two layers of the green. On the left you have only with the first filter. So you're seeing it's, it's definitely showing through. Uh, the white's still very visible in the first one. Not at all on the second. Now the second layer is fully dry. We're starting on the third layer. Again, still using the same paint. And it's again the same process, just getting more green onto these guys. Um, this is where you start tightening everything up. You want to make certain that where you're wanting the light to naturally fall is getting the full effect of the green. Um, and it's going to start showing through a lot better, a lot more, a lot less piecemeal, a lot less overspray, because that'll get covered up here in a few minutes. Um, but right now, like I said, layer number three. And I looked at all of them. And the paint was actually a little bit thicker than I thought. So I don't actually need to do what I would typically do, and that's the fourth layer. The green is showing up exactly how I want it to. Uh, the camera is not doing exactly what I want it to, but the green is exactly how I want it to be. Everything beneath it is, is fully covered. Um, there's no white showing through. There's no bits of black or plastic showing through underneath of it that I don't want. Overall, these guys are now ready for the next step which will be the Lupercal Green. Um, yes, there's a little bit of overspray on the uh, paper towel I'm using. Don't mind that. You ain't used to it. To start with the Lupercal Green, also by Forge World. Again, same mix ratio. I really wish that uh, Games Workshop would put this paint back out because this paint and the Sons of Horus Green airbrush paint, in fact, pretty much the entire Forge World airbrush line were phenomenal. Um, again, as you can see, about two to one, two bits thinner, one bit paint. Um, here comes my trusty stirring stick, and we're going to uh, stir this up before we get started. Yes, it's a sculpting tool that I've stuck in a cork. Um, it, yeah, sorry, not really sorry. It works. It gets, it gets underneath the needle of the airbrush so it can sit there and clear everything up. And because it's stainless steel, everything runs off of it really easily. So you can actually see how thin the paint is, which really kind of helps me judge and gauge how thin the actual paint is when I want it to be this way. So now we take the Lupercal green, and we're going to go on the opposite side of the model. We're not painting over the white. We're painting only on the sections that are currently still the black with the uh, very, very faint amounts of white from when we first did the 
Xenophon. Um, and we're going to apply this over pretty much everything that's not currently hit with the Sons of Horror screen. Um, if there's a little bit of an overlap, that's okay, because this being a darker paint, it will shade over top of the Sons of Horror Super Core. The Looper Call Green will shade over top of the Sons of Horror screen without causing any negative effects, um, unless you want to keep the uh, Sons of Horror screen in a specific area, and if you go over it too much, well, at that point, you might want to wipe it off quickly. Luckily, since this is being done very thinly at this point, it's not really a problem. One concern about this green is that it is a very dark green. Um, the nice thing about it is that it will uh, require multiple, multiple shades and multiple coats of it to produce the same effect of the same greening as the Sons of Horror screen did. Now, one thing I'm personally a fan of is if you do not have this green, especially since it's no longer available, you can still get the green. It is still 100% available. Um, you just cannot use these colors by name um, because, obviously, as I said, these colors themselves are no longer available. But Vallejo does do very good approximations with the green. Um, so for the Sons of Horus green, the lighter of the two, you need the Vallejo Model Air Light Green RLM25, and for the Lupercal Green, you need the IJN Deep Dark Green. Um, I don't have the actual model number on, or SKU number, whatever it is they have on that one for the Vallejo Model Air. But those two paints are almost direct equivalents, and with the filter we're going to apply later, it's perfect for doing this work. Um, and it will produce nearly identical coloration. Um, and that's thankfully, because we're, we're filtering all this with a third green here after a little while, that will make everything significantly easier for us to deal with. But again, here you see, going up, everything, covering it. You're going on the opposite side of the arms under the legs, underneath the arms, the underside of the backpack, any area where there's going to be shadows, this is where you're applying the screen. Um, and we'll be back shortly with round two. The second layer of the Lupercal green. Um, now, while the first layer was kind of just like on the initial Sons of Horror screen, a little bit more everywhere, this is being a bit more tightly focused. We're tightly focusing on the areas where the, the light, where the ambient light for surrounding areas will not naturally fall. Um, the right, the darker side of the head, um, the darker side of the legs, the darker side of the arms, underneath the arms, underneath the chest plate where the uh, um, belt would go for the waist. Um, the right for far right side of the chest plate, um, the right side of the face plate of the helmet, and the back of the actual backpack and underneath arms and shoulder pads where it meets the torso. Um, we're doing this in a bit more controlled manner, and again, I'm, I'm pulling up because that way it allows the paint to pull down, and it doesn't mean that I'm overspraying it or having it pool. It, it literally, at this layer of thinness, it's spreading itself into cracks and crevices because we're using a lot of control and we're not just going hog wild with the brush. But again, you'll see underneath the uh, the, the, the crotch guard, as it were, the uh, the legs, the arms, um, anywhere, like I said, the, the ambient light from the surrounding areas will not naturally fall. Um, and this is just done because at this layer, where we're putting it on over top of the black and over top of the first layer. If you don't apply multiple coats of this, it's not going to show the green very well because um, it's going to be kind of darkened down a bit too much by the under layer in black. So this coat, like I said, the second coat, this paint we will need four, four actual coats of um, just because if we don't, we're not going to have the green showing through enough for when it comes down to it. But at this point, that's uh, where we are. 
second layer. We'll, uh, we'll finish after this guy and we'll come back and we'll start with the third. Again, a lot of airbrush control, a lot of fine focus on this layer and the next layer because you want to really tighten it up. Um, your overspray is fine, but you don't really want you really don't want to overspray too very much at this point. You want to make certain that your light green and your dark green are shading together and have good transitions. You don't want them to overlayer and have a harsh, unpleasant looking uh, transition between the two. That's this. We'll be back in a minute. Second layer, we're going to start on the third. Now, one thing you can pick out here as we're getting ready to start is you'll notice on the guy surrounding it and on this guy the green is starting to show through finally that second layer after allowing it to dry really starts showing through now this third layer we're picking out specific deliberate spots where we want to highlight the actual green more on the underside of the legs um, that notch or niche in the torso right beside the uh, shoulder pad um, the underneath the arm the uh, small of the back, same with the area where there's the backpack is overlapping the actual body of the marine, the top of the head, the side of the face, so the actual helmet, um, the underside of the arm holding the pistol, between the legs, the darker side of the knees, um, and feet. You always got to make certain you're actually getting the right coloration on the actual feet because when you're sitting here and you're making these and you're painting these, if you don't do that, you're going to have problems that your feet are going to have wonky coloration to them. You might have a bit more black uh, than you would want. Um, we're having a little bit of dip built into the camera. Pardon me there. Kind of want to kind of freeze up a little bit. Um, still want to do it a little bit. I think it's not used to recording at this length of time. Um, if however long this video ends up being, um, it was originally a three-hour recording, and I went and sat through and painted all these guys. But like I said. At this point, we're chopping these guys, and we're cutting off the, not chopping, um, we're highlighting the darker areas of the green we want, and that's really all we're doing. Um, if it wants to freeze like this, then it does, and we can look at more in a bit. But like I said, this is the third round of the green. Um, only one more after this, but again, this is just highlighting the areas we want to be more green than just flat and dark. You'll see there's a lot more pop to everything now. Um, we're hitting the last striped bits of the actual green onto here. It's turning out fairly well. You'll notice we, with this level of, of, of applying this much um, thinner to the paint, I'm really still using a lot of the same cup in the airbrush. So, yay, you can save paint. But again, last layer, finishing it up, just applying the last bits of green before we apply our filter. So, that's it at this point on the Lipricol Green and the Sons of Horror screen. Uh, we'll come back shortly. We are getting ready to do the third color. This being the Coelia Green Shade, or however you pronounce it for Games Workshop. Um, this is just the shade. It is not the gloss version. That you can get. We do not want the gloss version, we want the actual shade. Um, at this point, the airbrush is completely dry. We're not going to be using a lot of thinner. Um, this is about two, one and a half to two parts of the green shade to one bit of thinner. Um, it's not one that you really need to thin down to very much because it's already very, very thin. Um, so that is kind of a good thing with this paint. That's why you want the shade, not the gloss, because the gloss kind of runs funny 
um, through the airbrush. It doesn't really come out the way I want it to. At least that's my mileage or my personal experience. Your mileage, of course, may vary. And again, using the uh, sculpting tool, it's about right. Good consistency. First Marine. Now, with this, once you're certain that the air is flowing properly, you want to hit the entire model. Um, shoulder pads, head, legs, arms. Every single bit that you've touched up to this point with shade, any colors whatsoever, you want to cover the entire model. Um, you're not doing this as a wash. You're doing this as kind of a filter to actually kind of give it a better blend of all the greens. Because right now it's kind of a harsh transition. You've got the lighter green on one side and the darker green on the other. And it doesn't really look uniform. But as you apply the Quilia green shade to everything, and as it runs, it's going to blend and darken up the Sons of Horus green and kind of apply a little bit more of a, a light shade to the looper call green. And as you can see, he's going over the entire thing. Um, in this specific instance, doing this with these shades or with the Vallejo color shades, either way, I personally recommend doing at least two layers of this, um, possibly three, depending on how dark you're wanting your greens to be. Uh, personally, I want my, my greens to have a fairly good, solid transition. You do want, I, I do not want it to be a very bright green or a very light green. So I will give it two hefty coats of this. Um, and overall, the transition between the two comes out looking, in my mind at least, uh, pretty quality. Um, now, we are going to have a third layer or a third shade on here, but we're not quite to that point yet. Um, so applying two layers of this to each and every one of these models. I don't really need to show you both layers on this because it's fairly self-explanatory. Um, this is when you really want to allow it to dry fully before you apply the second shade. You don't have to do that quite as much with the Sons of Horus Green or with the Lupercal Green. There can be a little bit of, of moisture still on those, but when, when you put the green shade down, you want this green shade to fully dry before you move on to the next step because otherwise it's just going to run and it will cause staining and pooling and that is one thing we absolutely do not want. So, I'll come back to you in a few minutes. Uh, like I said, trust me, this all comes together rather well. End of the second shade of the green shade. You'll see that the actual Sons of Horus green it's toned down quite a bit. It's not nearly as bright. And the other, the, uh, the Lupercal Green, is shaded up fairly nicely. Um, the two are blending together well at this point. Um, our next step that I personally think is kind of counterintuitive, but it works purely because of color theory and how everything works. Um, we're going to be applying a purple. Um, I know, it seems counterintuitive, but we're not applying a full bore purple, we're applying a purple shade, kind of a purple um, tint, as it were. In this case, we're going to be using Purple Tone by Quick Shader from Artie Painter. But you can use any of the uh, various purples you want. Druchi Violet's a very good one, um, but you're going to be doing that here in a minute, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So all that's left to do is to apply the purple shade. Um, and again, the one we're going to be using for this specific purpose is Purple Tone by Armour Painter. Um, it's the quick shade. It's fairly easy to get hold of. Um, the reason I'm using it specifically right now is because I'm out of the violet I would normally use from the Drucci Violet from Use Workshop. But Purple Tone, purple tone works just as well. Um, I overfill my cup on this one because I always gauge too little on this. I don't know why, I just do. But uh, using this, uh, I'm probably going to stop right about there and then fill it up with uh, not quite as much of the thinner, but 
I did it. It's what I do. It's inner center. Um, you don't really need a lot of paint at this point. Um, you do want to apply this very, very sparingly as we do this because too much of it can overpower the greens and overpower the miniature and that is the very last thing we want to do in this case. We don't want it to overpower. We want it to kind of enhance. And you'll see what, I'm, what I mean in a moment. So, just in the very darkest areas of the darkest green. That's, that's all we want. We don't want a lot. We want a very, very specifically limited amount of the green or the purple zone into the green. Because anything too much is going to overpower the miniature overpower the green that's the last thing we want so as you see the greens are blended together and we're being very very careful with how much purple we apply just to specific areas where we want it darker like I said side of the chest plate side of the head again where the backpack and the uh, back meet the back and the thigh the underside, the very underside of the arms. There's really not a lot of this we're going to use. It's just used and just being used to enhance the, uh, the green to give it a bit more of a, a shade, as it were, to actually make everything look a little bit different, a little bit better. Um, if you apply too much, it starts looking purple. You don't want it so purple. You just want it to give that green a little bit more depth, make it look a little bit different. Um, and trust me, it, it works phenomenally in the final step. Um, again, uh, the way I do it with the thin side I put my paints to, um, I believe I'm a firm believer in the 4-4-2-2 four, four, two, two method. Um, four, shade, uh, four thin layers of the primary colors you're using in this case. Then, like I said, four thin layers of Sun's Horus green, four thin layers of Lupercal green, then two thinned layers of the Quellia green shade and two spot layers of the purple tone for this case. And once everything has been allowed to dry fully, you will use, um, well, personally, I use uh, gloss varnish after this part because that allows everything to sit there and be properly sealed and be ready for the next layer of paints. So. As you see, first layer of purple is going down. Not a lot of purple, just a small, tiny amount in these specific areas. Purple getting ready to go down. Um, you can actually faintly see it in this image, just the slight pops in those areas. And this is, again, just the second layer of the purple, bringing up those tones in those specific spots. Not a lot to it just trigger control and being very very careful along edges especially where if you're applying it to an area where the greens are meeting such as the, the chest plate um, the head and the front of the legs but again careful application small amounts of purple go a long way And here we go with our guys. This is after we've applied the uh, spray varnish, the uh, gloss varnish. You'll see how the greens are blending together here. Yeah, zoom in really well. You've got the light green from the Sun's Horus green on the, for these miniatures, the left side. You see how it darkens down on the right. Let me turn this over. Um, like I said, the lighter greens showing a very very kind of darkish light green followed by the darkening from no ambient light falling there um, putting on this light above so you can kind of see a little bit better but you can see how the transition is kind of naturally following the natural shadows and you can actually well I make try to make this focus properly uh, bear with me sorry you can pick out a little bit of the purple tone there on the underside of the arm, but it's so. Uh, no, didn't want to focus again. Hold on.
And there we go. So you can see a little bit of the purple. Um, it, it just blends in with the green and darkens it in that spot. Again, there's some purple on the side of the torso where the green is to help blend it out. And you'll notice the underside of the legs it's not the same underside. It's again, reflecting where the light will fall. So the inner thigh of the right leg is gonna have some of the light falling there. So that's still the lighter green, whereas the inner thigh of the left leg will not. Um, you'll see the underside has a little bit of that purple tone to it. Again, it's just enhancing that green and helping show the shadows darker in those specific areas. Uh, this guy being just a lime marine, um, he's fairly, smoothly transitioned. Um, we've got a lot of the transitions on the backpack as you can see it's hidden by the ribbing and on the helmet. Um, this guy being the sergeant for the inducti, again you can see how everything transitions and darkens and lights. Specifically looking at the helmet you can see how it just kind of fades into a more brightly air, brightly lit green as opposed to the darker green. Again same thing with the backpack, same thing with the legs. It looks lighter on this side than it does on the other. Um, and the backpack, again, same smooth transition. The purple really helps enhance that darker shadows underneath the backpack and on the back side of that leg. And then we're back to the helmet in the front. Now, side-by-side -side comparison is what I'm going to do here in a moment, um, because that way you can kind of see how all the transitions work and see the two side-by-side colors wise. Um, so we'll use this guy and we'll use this one. Uh, this one. Uh, yeah, this one. There we go. So, the lighter tone versus the darker tone. Um, showing the greens off. They're still green. They're still noticeably green. They're just also noticeably different compared to one another. Still the same shades on the same size. As you can see, if you I put lower slightly to more to the left of the light, they're the same tones, the same greens, and that purple just kind of, like I said, accents the darkness underneath. It's uh, this is how I paint the Sons of Horus green for Horus Heresy, Age of Darkness, whatever you want to call it. Uh, my name's Duncan from the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much, and uh, stay tuned. Part two will be how I do the rest of the Sons of Horus. Remember, stay accountable to your hobby and to your buddies, and we'll see you next time.